Good morning and welcome to the June episode of the CEO podcast. Thank you to ServeSafe for sponsoring this podcast. In just a few minutes, I am going to drop a link into the chat so you can see and find out more about our ServeSafe program and how you can get your employees some training. This morning, Washington Hospitality Association President and CEO Anthony Antone is going to talk about the workforce, where we are and where we're going. And he is joined by our Senior Director of Communications, Lex Nepomuceno. Good morning. Well, I couldn't come up with a good song uh, this this time as we're waiting for everyone to, to, to get logged in and get going here. So uh, let's mix it up rather than doing a song for our trivia. Um, unless anyone has a good song related to our workforce struggles. Um, I thought about working at the car wash or something like that, but that's not really who we are. Um Look, we're going to talk a little bit about our SurfSafe program today. So let's have our trivia contest today um, for who I will buy lunch. What is your member discount for SurfSafe? How much do you get discounted off by being a member of the association? So a little more of a challenge on that one. Uh, so uh, during the podcast, whoever can get that number right of what is the SurfSafe discount uh, for your membership, um, I will come buy you lunch. So um, with that, Lisa, as we're getting everyone uh, geared up here and we're a, a couple minutes in, is, is SurfSafe our sponsor today? Did you already yes, mention that? Yeah, yes. very cool. Well, we appreciate them sponsoring. And um, let me go into, uh, I'm trying to hide the participants thing on my screen. Let me go into the uh, a little bit of the news from this past month. Um, one, uh, SurfSafe is now kicking in. We've got the SurfSafe requirement coming up in the brand new food code, and we're seeing um, classes really skyrocket. So um, I would recommend that you get ahead of this, um, and particularly with turnover, um, have a couple of people backed up because you are required someone in your business to have SurfSafe when the new food code takes effect. We are trying to schedule classes around the state. So Lisa, could you put into people in the chat um, where they can volunteer to become a class in their area or where they can get information about SurfSafe or online SurfSafe for that matter. And so it's all right there to be found. So that's one of the exciting things is seeing SurfSafe classes really take off. Uh, that kind of leads into our food code. Lex, uh, on the information side, what what's a good uh, update on the value you're bringing in information? This well, we uh, the team has done a lot of updates regarding uh, the food code changes. We uh, did a series of videos and webinars with uh, uh, officials and members of the government affairs team on the food code issue. And we put together a comprehensive food code toolkit, uh, which we update on a regular basis. So if you want to know about the latest things, uh, latest developments regarding the food code, inform uh, education information and so forth, um, uh, Lisa will put up the link to our food code toolkit on the chat here. And uh, we'll add that link also in the descriptions for, um, uh, for our replays. And if you're driving today, you can go to wahospitality.org and then under uh, training, um, you can you can click on uh, SurfSafe or some of the other things. Uh, well, the toolkit, is the toolkit in the member protected area, Lex? Uh, the food code toolkit, since that has a wider uh, implications on uh, our entire industry, that is available to um, everybody who goes to the site. Um, okay. So yeah, just go to the wahospitality.org type in the search food code and uh, it should be up there. Or they can go to resources and toolkits, right? Right Correct. there right on the drop down. Okay. That's right. Um, well, on uh, anything else in your area, what's going to come up this month, Lex, on information? Well, the uh, team has been working with our government affairs team on some financial relief uh, information. And we're planning on uh, doing a webinar later this month. Uh, we're still trying to get some folks scheduled Um uh, who can help with that information. Uh, so we don't have a, de a date yet, but stay tuned. Uh, the info team will make sure that we'll put it into our next weekly emails and social media. So, um, uh, and we'll let you know about the date so that you could register. Uh, and again, we're trying to find anything possible for financial relief for our industry. Um, and uh, that's where we plan to uh, share some of that information. Uh, additionally, uh, recently we, we put out a, um, a liquor control board uh, um, article uh, and toolkit on our website that can also be found on wahospitality.org. And um, on a lighter note, uh, the culinary trends uh, research from the National Restaurant Association was released this past month. And we do a nice little overview of that. And that is also shared on our website. And then finally, uh, expect to see the annual buyer's guide show up in your mailbox in the next uh, week or two. 
So we just finished production of that. That's a big project that includes all of our allied members and vendors and resources. And uh, that is completed and we'll be reaching you uh, in the next week or two. Well, thank you for everything uh, you're providing there. Um, you did mention the commerce grants and let's, so let me get into state government affairs a little bit. This is going to be kind of the last round of grants coming out this summer. And so if you added them all up, if you counted them individually, I mean, we're going to be at seven or eight grants we'll be talking about. But the first ones will be the ones that Lex mentioned, which is the Working Washington Five grants. Uh, they should be coming out here in the next few weeks. The state government affairs team is working with commerce to make sure that uh, our industry is supported and it, its needs are met within that. So watch for what Lex will be putting out. That'll be coming out soon. Um, we also had our uh, our meeting with the Washington Tourism Marketing Authority, and we picked the overall um, success measurement for, for Washington tourism, which is out-of-state spending. So our job in, in our work with the tourism groups is to get people to get here from out-of-state into the beds of our members and then having breakfast, lunch, and dinner in, in the... Uh, in our, in our member properties. So uh, uh, we will be talking more about out-of-state spending as we're talking to candidates. We'll talk about how much out-of-state spending means because uh, we'd like to grow those tourism marketing dollars uh, to fill your businesses back up. Within that, I did mention interviewing candidates. If you ever thought about running for office, uh, you better think about pretty quickly. We got our uh, GA team is out there interviewing candidates uh, this summer and we'll be interviewing probably over a couple of hundred candidates trying to figure out who's going to be strong for our industry, um, who should scare us just a little bit and get you good information so you can know the candidates that will support our industry. It's always great to have someone from lodging or restaurants or entertainment in the, uh, in the legislature. It just makes the conversation about what we go through so much easier um, when, when an operator has been there. Um, moving on to another form of government affairs, uh, it was a little bit of a tougher month on the federal side. <clears throat> we, uh, we did struggle uh, on the restaurant revitalization fund, and we did lose the vote by three votes. Um, we were hoping to uh, successfully get the, the replenishing or the, the fulfilling of the restaurant revitalization fund through Congress. Uh, we were unable to do that. Um, it's not because of uh, the work that Cantwell and, and Murray did, they were incredible. And so if you're at an event, if you have a chance to say thank you to Senator Murray or Senator Cantwell, they, uh, they were incredible in what they did. Um, and on the House side, we saw great work from Herrera Butler and from, uh, and from Strickland and from other House reps, uh, Kilmer, uh, Adam Smith's office. So uh, most of our delegation worked really hard to try to get us a relief. Um, and again, in the Senate, we fell three votes short. Um, mostly those Midwest and Southern states that were not closed or felt them as much pain as we did, uh, their senators um, did not go along with uh, supporting the, the, the efforts. So tough news on our front. Um, now we're going to focus on the grants. If another window comes up, we'll certainly try to go through it. But it's if I'm planning my business, um, I would I would probably more plan without it. And then if something comes through, we will jump through that window. Ran through uh, about 10 minutes of news here in the past month. It feels like every month we have more news we can cover. It makes me admire all of the uh, um, <laughs> all the different people who uh, try to put out news in 10 minutes or less. Anything I missed or I went too far or I stepped on the headline in, in covering the news of the past month. Uh, no, no. Um, I think the only thing that I note is that we are in the, the beginning uh, months of summer, and uh, that is a big trend in our industry. And so we do plan on releasing some articles related to that in terms of managing your workforce and supply chain issues and so forth. Lisa, did any questions come through on the news piece before I get into the other that I can yeah, address? Yeah, um, a question from Susanna Kim. She is kind of curious about how we apply to run for those positions that you were talking about. We would love to help with that. So, uh, Susanna, if you can email us your interest at the, uh, the podcast email, we will connect you to our government affairs team and connect you with your local county, uh, I, I almost said assessors, Auditor. Lex, I'm having a brain moment. We'll help you connect you to your local county office where you can apply uh, to run for office. Uh, so we'll go from there. Uh, and hey, we'd love to have it. That'd be great. Again, the more people we get in office, um, the more we can explain why tourism matters and why our industry matters and why these issues and the small margins we live on um, are important to protect. So with that, 
I'm going to get into what we promised to talk about today, which is one of the larger um, things our industry is facing, and that's workforce scarcity. I, I know everyone is aware, but I'll do the quick recap just so we can feel the moment of pain we've been experiencing. We, we laid off close to 160,000 people. Um, we reclaimed most of that, um, and yet all the restrictions are gone now. When we laid off those people, initially they went on unemployment. But what happened is the other industries that were opening kept hiring. And um, and now we're at a point where people are not receiving any extra unemployment benefits. There's no extra benefit for staying on unemployment. And so where are we? April gave us the first real look to see, if, to see almost six weeks of clean data. What's going on with our employment snapshot? So April is the latest data I've got. I know you're thinking, well, it's June 1. Don't you have May data? Not for a little bit longer. Um, but I do think the April data is really interesting. And, and uh, I want to walk through what I'm seeing. One, there are 6,000 more people working in Washington State than there was in April 2019, pre-pandemic. So there's no now more people working than there was pre-pandemic. Even more interesting than that, to me, is there's 35,000 more people working in the private sector. So in, in industries like ours and all the private sector, non-government industries, um, we now have more employment than we've ever had before um, as collectively and with all private. Employment. And yet I'm talking about all this good news. And some of you are like, what the hell? Because our industry is still down 24,000 or roughly 7% of our work. And so what happened, and it's pretty clear to see now, is when everyone else, we had to let everyone go because we didn't have work for them. The governor had us closed. Uh, and then other industries were open. People got jobs in those industries and they were hiring. And um, everyone is working. They're just working for someone else. Construction and retail are each up 10,000 from pre-pandemic. Uh, Amazon slash information services, which is the category that Amazon is in, is up 18,000 workers. An interesting thing from the last, uh, from the first half of this year is office workers are up 25,000 office workers. Um, so in fact, just about every category minus three are, are up in their employment. Hospitality, manufacturing, driven mostly by Boeing, and healthcare are the only major categories that are still down. Everybody else is uh, is up over their employment uh, from pre-pandemic. So Lex, before you and I just kind of brainstorm what this means a little bit, um, I do want to talk about some, some nuances to the story. Um, one, uh, our industry is getting competitive. And for the second month in a row, hospitality gained workers while retail lost. So retail was up closer to 18 to 20,000 workers. Last month, they actually lost 8,000 8, employees. And so people are leaving retail and going back to other industries. And we're one of those industries. Uh, hospitality was up 3,000 workers last month versus retail. So the more we've, that competitive stuff we did with our wages, um, the changes we're making to attract workers back, some of the youth transfer, um, it's it's coming back to our industry. And I would hope that that would continue in the next few months. I think the other thing that's interesting is, uh, and I'll share my screen on this just for this one moment, but I know if you're driving, it will do you no good at all, but it'll just help me talk about um, what we're seeing. And I'll share, there we go, going to this right here. What I'm bringing up for those who are driving is a map of um, all the uh, unemployment rates across the state. And when you look at unemployment rate, what you want to see is 5%. 5% is natural unemployment. In good times, people are still mad at their boss. They're still moving they are still deciding I'd rather do something else. They are still saying maybe I'd rather be home with kids or do other stuff. There's natural unemployment that happens. Um, and no matter how good the economy is, it'll be hard to be below that number. That natural unemployment is considered 5%. If you look across Washington, you see that, holy crap, King County is now under 2% unemployment and Snohomish is under 2.3. But that's not a universal truth. And so um, what we're now seeing across the state is um, really kind of a staggered recovery and so uh, there are 14 counties that are still over that 5% mark, which means there's still people out there in those counties um, able to work. If you're in uh, in Muckleteo, it does you no good that, that Ferry County or Yakima County is at 6.2 and 8.2% respectively unemployment. But if you are in those counties, um, I would continue to work with your work source offices and see what we can do to get those people back to work. There's really no reason we shouldn't get every every county under five. Another thing that I think is is interesting in uh, 
the conversation is, uh, you know, hospitality is not uniformly down that 7% of workers that I talked about in the beginning. Um, when you look at hospitality, uh, restaurants are actually down 10,000 workers. So little less than half of the total number, but that's only 4% of the restaurant total. You look at entertainment and recreation as the other major part of hospitality, they're down 17% of their pre pre-pandemic work, one of the higher numbers, um, around 7,000 workers. And then one of the most hits of all the statewide categories is our lodging front. It's our lodging partners. So our lodging members are down 21% of their pre-pandemic workforce. So we're really seeing um, through 2021, which was a, u a universal down in employment, we're now seeing um, different segments separate a little bit. Um, and accommodation um, is one of the areas that's really hurting. Where this gets even more interesting, and this will be the last nuance that I'll talk about today, and then Lex, let's just open it up for a good conversation, is if you separate the Seattle metro area from the rest of the states, that difference gets even more profound. So if you look at restaurants outside of the Seattle metro area, restaurant workers are actually up from pre-pandemic. So there's now outside of the Seattle metro area, there's more people working in the restaurant industry than there was before. But Seattle's metro area is still down 11%. Arts and entertainment, um, recreation, um, that segment of hospitality, the rest of the state's down 7%, but Seattle metro area is down 28%. And then lodging, and uh, I, I know a lot of people will feel this, in the Seattle metro area is down 43%. 43% of its pre-pandemic workforce compared to 6% pre-pandemic. When you factor in, in the Seattle metro area, the people higher up, 8 to 10% in a normal year for summer business, um, that gap that accommodation is looking at is big. Um, and it's a, con it's a concern for us. We're gonna start doing some press conferences and other things talking about the great jobs in lodging and in hospitality overall. Um, but you really look at that number and you're like, holy cow, that's one of the big drivers in why hospitality is strugg struggling to come back. Lex, Lex, I know I'm a numbers nerd at the highest level. What did I go through too fast that you'd like to kind of have me go back over and be less nerdy and a little more of a person? Well, <clears throat> I think uh, one of the things that uh, when, you, when you shared some of those numbers was how it crosses from one industry to the next. When you mentioned that there's an uptrend in regards to construction, I know that I, ha I have some friends that are opening up restaurants in uh, the Seattle area, but they had to push back the construction for you know a good six to eight months because of COVID and, and because of the construction issues related to that. So I keep thinking to myself, uh, what does this all mean? Does this mean that we're gonna see a spike in the next three to six months in terms of availability? Uh, from both a uh, employer standpoint and an employee standpoint. We got the snapshot now, but what does this mean for our restaurants and our hoteliers in the next three to six months? Well, I think for me, the, we do want to talk about lodging jobs in the lodging industry. And that's just that number we, we're going to need some help get people back to work. And so uh, I would imagine we will do some press conferences and some more media availability and try to get the word out to the general public of, um, have you considered your first job being, or have you considered getting a, 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 your, your teeth cut in this area. I think we're gonna have to do some more public conversations and helping. Um, two, I think the real interesting in the number that the adjustments we've been making to wages and benefit packages and how we talk about the industry are working. And we're seeing that in our gain against retail. So we're seeing ourselves pick up gain, pick up ground when there's no more workers left, right? Um, so the changes that you're making, um, we are making incremental impacts by being more competitive. Um, those are a couple of my initial thoughts. Um, the other thing that I would really recommend, particularly with seasonal hiring, is how do you stock your local high school? Not in a mean, creepy way, <laughs> but how do you say, hey, graduates are coming up. Uh, people are getting out of school here this month. How do I make sure all those people who are looking for the summer job come to me? How do I get to those high schools now? How do I talk to the counselors, sponsor something, sponsor something at graduation? I don't know. Be creative. Uh, we are still seeing uh, teen employment down. Teen employment is not skyrocketing up per se. It's up slightly. Uh, but we're going to have a whole lot of people getting out of school here in two weeks. Maybe pre-pandemic, we would have said, eh, we don't really hire teenagers because the rules related to them. But the summer rules are lighter. Uh, and 
there's no more bodies. So what can you do to, to drive down to that local school and, and get those three to 400 kids that are about to graduate and say, anyone need a job this summer? The other thing I think is interesting when I'm talking to some of the high school counselors and some of the other folks, there's a disconnect behind between how we're seeking high schoolers and teens and where they're applying. So I've talked to a couple of different teen groups and they're like, well, I've applied, but no one ever called me back or no one ever did this. Or So the way they think they should apply and the way our industry is outreaching is not making a successful connection. So we have to keep looking at how we get better at that. Lex, did I answer your questions in, the, in that area? Yeah, uh, there's also another question in regards to uh, the numbers. Um, uh, so supply chain, I know that we... Uh, in the industry, we talk about hotel workforce, we talk about uh, restaurant workforce, gaming, and so forth. But supply chain and our food service providers and our vendors are an essential part of our operations. Uh, what are some of the numbers or what are you seeing in that that side of the, the equation? Well, it's interesting. That's part of the reason that transportation numbers are up. Um, and so uh, early in, in this, we were seeing um, a severe shortage on the trucker side. I still think we're down. But if you just look at pure numbers on the transportation side, we see those numbers climbing climbing up. Uh, and so we have a shortage, but not nearly the shortage that we had. I think a lot of that is we did get a lot of the word out there to the general public of there's good jobs here. These are these are great jobs if this is what you want to do. Um, and we worked with our allied partners in trying to support that to work source in other areas. Uh, part of it, I also think they got really, really competitive on their salary packages and otherwise, because like us, they were just out of body. Uh, it will be interesting to see how that holds in the first few months of summer. So what I would love to do, and then, then Alex, if anyone has any questions on workforce scarcity, or other things going in the industry, please put them in the chat. We try to keep these to about 30 minutes so you can list them in a drive or plan around um, uh, uh, the podcast. So uh, if anyone has any questions, please pop them in here and we'll go from there. Lex, uh, when you were gearing up in your old pizza business for summer, uh, how did you attack the high schools? When you were looking at, at teen employment and kids getting out for, for summer as this as an opportunity, how did you connect to the high schools for a potential strong recruitment base? Well, a lot of times uh, we had franchisees uh, reaching out or our corporate stores reach out to the local high schools directly because they're sponsors for some of the events and uh, some of those other things. But uh, uh, one of the things that we always increased prior to the summer months was uh, we did uh, recruitment specific uh, door hanging. So you know how you used to get those door hangers and in your home uh, talking about the latest pizza special. Well, we made sure that we revised some of the advertising to really focus on we're now hiring drivers, we're now hiring inside people, we're now hiring um, uh, people who can work the make line and so forth. So we uh, tended to do that in, in the May, June timeframe so that we could try to get uh, folks ready for the, the summer months. But uh, but we got little, we had to be a little bit more creative leading up to summer. I do have all of the MSA areas kind of at my fingertips. If you're in a particular area of the state and you want to hear how you're comparing, you can either just email and let me know or ask in the in the in the chat and I can get you um great that you talked about Seattle MSAs in the whole state, Anthony, but I live in Mount, Mount Vernon. And uh, can you give me a little sense of what's going on in my area? Uh, we do track the state data for uh, all the MSAs and I can get you uh, how employment is looking in your areas as well, specifically. Any other questions? Well, Lex, we are exactly 30 minutes, so we're getting better at this. It feels in the long run, you could see Lisa going pale and starting to wave her hands at me and sending these odd emojis to get me to shut up. So before I, I, I receive any of that information from Lisa, unless there's any other questions coming into the Q&A. Uh, I want to tell everyone to have a uh, great June. Uh, good luck in hiring. Um, I would strongly recommend contacting all the schools in your area early and often uh, because and making sure you're competitive because we are seeing those things are making a difference. Also, the other thing I would mention is don't write off uh, how important your culture is in your business. We've been doing a podcast series dedicated to improving the culture in restaurants and hotels uh, and, and hospitality as a whole, uh, because we know that there's a perception issue with our what it's like to work on our businesses. And we want to actually turn that around into a a, a win. This is an area where we think we can win on. So uh, Lisa, if you can drop in the link to the Northwest uh, Leadership Podcast as we go away. Did anyone get the discount uh, right for uh, for SurfSafe? I haven't seen anyone put that, drop that number into the chat, but I will say that Bailey had a decent amount of success contacting the Career Center and the CTE 
career and technical and education department of their school, uh, sent them job post flyers with the ply at email address and several students had contacted them. Great advice, Bailey. Thank you for throwing that in there. Um, I appreciate that. Well, it's a uh, 32% if you're, for the on in-person classes. So if you're, uh, um, that's about 75 bucks, 70 some dollars in savings. Each time you uh, put someone through ServeSafe, you get with your membership. So again, that, that mandate is coming up uh, and it's always easier to be head of the rush than trying to schedule someone in classes the last minute or wait till after you get caught from the health department. So we'll go from there. Everybody have a great June. It's an honor to serve you uh, and we'll catch up soon.